there are many, many cool checkmating patterns and the back rank checkmate is one of them. I'd like to show you a few other patterns that really happen a lot, more than you think. Okay, and I was reading a book from a friend of mine. His name is Mark Dovoretsky. Mark Dovoretsky is considered one of the greatest trainers, chess trainers in the whole of Russia, okay? And for 40 years, he's been, do he's been teaching chess to grandmasters and beginners and experts, and he's really, really good. So he gave me a copy of his book, and he signed it for me. And I was just going through the pages of the book yesterday, and he showed a, common, a, a pattern, a checkmating pattern, I thought was really cool. And so I wanted to share it with you. I've set up this position on the board, and why it's White's turn to play. If we look at the position from the material point of view, two knights against two rooks, normally speaking, this is a big favorite for the two rooks. The two rooks uh, are much stronger than the two knights. However, it's White to play, and White has a forced checkmating variation. Yes, young man. Two knights checkmate. Yes, but which move in this exact position should white play? Okay. Now let's think about it. If we play the move knight to f6, check to the king, where on earth can the king go? Charlie. Which is a very good move, because after king to g7, notice that this rook attacks this knight, and there's no follow through to the move knight f6 check. So unfortunately, this check doesn't work. We need another move. Charlie. Knight to g5 check. Knight to g5. That was the move I thought of too. I thought knight to g5 check. But then I thought, what am I going to do if the king goes here? Now my queen is being attacked by the rook. My knight is actually being attacked by the king. Didn't like that either. And I thought knight g5. Yes, young man. Well, there's, uh, it's, if it's white, yeah, it is. still is a check. How? Which move? What would you do? Tell me. Queen on F1 takes the rook on F8. Yes. And, the, and that's check to the king, so the queen would have to take oh. the rook. Yeah, I didn't take it. <laughs> okay. So, I thought, just as the class thought, I thought to myself, well, it's got to be check. That's got, but then king g7. Oh, I know, it's got to be check. Well, then king h6 said, oh my goodness. White to move and play, but he should not make a check. But how could he threaten checkmate? How can white threaten to make a checkmate? He's going to have to use his queen. That's the only hint I'm going to give you. You're going to have to use your queen. Uh-huh. Charlie, do you see a good move? It's the, bo it's the board is a little crooked. I apologize about that. The easel is messed up. <laughs> okay, it took me a while as well, but how about this move? The queen goes to F6. Ooh. Now, what move does that, this move queen f6 threatens checkmate. What's the checkmate threat that that move makes, Charlie? Exactly. It threatens queen g7 checkmate to the king because the knight protects the queen. 
So with this move, queen f6, now I get it. Now I saw the trick. What happens if black captures the knight? Ah, Charlie. Queen to h6 check. Very, very good. The queen comes to h6 checking the king. The knight protects the queen, so the king cannot capture the queen because of the knight's protection. The king would have to drop back to g8. And now, yes, young man. Queen h8. Ah, queen h8 check is a very good move as the queen is protected by the knight. But our knight, the knight, yes, Charlie. Yeah. Oh. That's a pretty cool checkmating pattern, right? Queen to g6, check to the king. The king cannot go into the corner because, because the knight protects the corner square. Right. Well, that was pretty cool. I like that checkmate very much. Let's do it again. The queen comes up the board, threatening the checkmate here. The knight was captured by the pawn, which opened up the sixth rank. So we checked here. The king was forced to drop back, and we made a delightful little checkmate. That's pattern number one. Let's do pattern number two, checkmating pattern number two. So at the start, we discovered checks by either knight weren't good. So we started with the move queen f6. Now, black's a very clever player. Black said, aha, I get it. You want to checkmate me on g7, I'm going to protect the square. So black played the move rook g8, protecting the square. And then did you have a question? No, it's OK. OK, so now. Black protect, there's no more queen g7 checkmate because the rook could capture the queen. Young man, what should white play? Okay, queen to g7 check. It's not checkmate because the rook has to take the queen. And then knight f6 check. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Knight f6 checkmate. Whoa! How cool is that? These two knights attack, this knight attacks the king. The king cannot go here to h6 or to h8. Why? Because of that knight. This knight on f6 checks the king. The king cannot go to this square, g8, because that square is protected. The king is trapped by its own forces. That rook on g7 and that pawn on g6 means that black cannot move his king to either square. Checkmate. Isn't that a pretty pattern? Well, chess is, of course, full of these pretty patterns. And checkmates occur in all kinds of positions. In this position, would you raise your hands if you think white is winning? OK. Raise your hands if you think the position's even. Depends on the player. <laughs> it depends on the player. I like that. Yeah. Uh, let's say yeah. the players are really good, OK? So for those of you who raised your hand, who thought that white is winning, tell me why you think white is winning. Who raised this? Uh, it's black. Well, it's black's move because black's White's last turn was to attack the queen with the rook. So those of you who raised your hand who thought that white was winning, go ahead and tell me why you thought white is winning. 
Why is white winning? Why is white winning? The point is, is the reason that you thought was white was winning is because he has two knights. Black doesn't have two knights. White has two rooks. Black only has one rook. So from the material point of view, white's killing him. The game's over. It's like, man, uh, white should give it up. But black has a move that will soon force checkmate. Young man. Queen E2 is an excellent move. You bring, first of all, your, your queen was in capture. So you bring your queen out of capture. But if you bring your queen to E2, I don't know. Maybe I will develop my bishop. So queen E2 is a good move, but it's not the best one. Young man. <clears throat> if there was a daily prize or, you know, the best uh, answer of the class, you would be the winner. <laughs> Very good. Uh, look what the young gentleman said. Queen takes F1 check. That was an unexpected move, right? Queen takes F1 check. Yes, young man. But that doesn't mean it's immediately. Exactly. Because the king can take it. Precisely. And that's, a z in fact, not only can the king take it, he there's no, <laughs> there's no choice. He recaptures the queen. So white's really happy because he said, I got your queen and you only got a rook. I'm really winning now. But black has a really good move, Charlie. So we pause right here. The bishop checks the king. The king cannot move forwards because of f2. It can't move to g2 because of the bishop's control. Correct. No, e1 and e2 are defended by the rook. So in fact, White has no choice and moves king to g1, young man. Ch check and mate. In fact, this is a back rank checkmate, the one that Bobby Fischer made famous in his book, Bobby Fischer Teaches Chess. But White's king is in check to the rook, but it has nowhere to move, young man. Yeah, exactly. Even though from the starting position, w white was winning by a huge material margin. Actually, I think it's even more than four points. Let's see. So we have one, two, three, four pawns. So that's four. But we have one, two, three, four, five pawns. So the moment black is a pawn up, but the bishops are the same, the rooks are the same, the queens are the same. So one pawn for black, three, three for white, plus five. Six and five is 11, minus one. White was up by 10 points and still lost. Why did white lose this particular position? Because you notice that white's king is a little bit vulnerable. In other words, this pawn was on g3. That allowed this check, sacrifice of the queen, followed by the checkmating pattern that we saw. How many times in chess games that you've played has your opponent had a pawn on g3? It happens to me a lot. So this type of pattern is a real common uh, checkmating pattern. Yeah, I think, you see, I had a kind of a rule when I was starting to play chess. My rule was that I had to make the same mistake at least twice. What? Yeah, what? That's a silly rule. But here's my thinking. 
The reason why I had to make every mistake in chess at least twice is because I needed to confirm that the first time it really was a mistake. <laughs> How could I be sure? Okay, so trust me when I say, if you think about all the mistakes, all the blunders you have ever made in chess, please rest assured I made them as well, but at least twice. I'm going to teach you a pattern of checkmate that I lost. Okay, I'm black, and this is a game I lost. It's not that I'm very proud of this game. Oh, no, 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 not at all. I'm not proud of this game in any way. I lost the same game twice. <laughs> so you could almost say I lost this position many times. Okay, so I'm black, and I thought I'm doing really good. Okay, you tell me when you think I'm doing badly. So he attacked my pawn, I defended. My opponent brought out his bishop. This is called the Italian game, or the Italian opening. Okay, I brought out my bishop. What's good for my opponent's gotta be good for me. My opponent has castled bringing his king into safety. We can see that my opponent's pretty darn good, right? He's got his principles down, he's played in the center, he's brought his king into safety, and he's getting his pieces off the back rank. I figured that's a good idea for me too. I have played the move knight e7. Everybody think this is okay move? I, I did, I mean I played it. I brought my knight to e7, and I'm preparing to castle. It's not a good move. How many of you think it's OK? Looks OK to me. How many of you think it's a rotten move, like terrible, the worst move ever? <laughs> okay. In truth, it's a bad move. It w but I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I thought I developed a knight. OK, young man. Do you have a question? Oh, no, okay. So white, my, yes? It's a bad move because you just blocked your queen from being uh, active or whatever, yeah. So one of the things you might think to yourselves is at the moment the queen is on a good diagonal and by moving my knight here, I block my queen. In truth, the best move is just to develop the knight to its no most natural square, f6. Yes, young man. But even that would still be blocking the queen's diagonal. That's correct. Even if I brought my knight here, my queen's diagonal would be blocked. OK, I have one extra square. So it's hard to imagine that this move is so bad. Because it, it's just a subtle difference, a small difference between the two knight moves, but yet it makes all the difference in the world. My opponent played knight to g5 with his bishop, and now his knight is attacking my pawn. I figured I had that whole thing covered. I had it under control. I played the move castles. And at this exact moment, I was really happy because I thought I had controlled the center, I had developed, and I had brought my king into safety. In fact, not only is my king not in safety, it's in danger. I want you guys to beat me with a checkmating pattern, and what move should white play now? Charlie. Whoa! Queen to h5. Boy, I didn't see that one coming. Like, whoa, oh, no! White played queen to h5, and I, I felt like, oh my gosh, because if my knight had been on this square, queen h5 would have been a mistake. I would have taken the queen. With a knight on this square, on e7 and not f6, 
Suddenly queen h5, and I'm in trouble. Yes, young man. Because you can do knight h7 checkmate. Queen h7 checkmate. Yeah. Queen takes h7 because the knight, protect, the knight is attacking this pawn. The queen is, att is attacking this pawn. I'm being faced with checkmate. What is my only move? What did I do? Young man. Yes, h7, h6. So I stopped, queen takes h7 checkmate. And I knew that was checkmate, by the way. So I was pretty good. I was proud of myself that I didn't allow checkmate. But now, white did something really good. What did he do? Ariana. Ooh! That's exactly what he did. Boy, did you hit the nail on the head with that move. Oh, no. Now, oh, I was shocked. Oh, my goodness. I was shocked. And I realized that the bishop protects the knight. The queen protects the knight. So I couldn't capture the knight with my rook because I would lose my rook, even though I should capture the knight with my I, I was so shocked and surprised. I have moved my queen. I moved my queen. Now keep in mind, I lost this position at least twice in exactly the same way. Well, for the moment, I was afraid that the knight was going to take my queen, which is why I moved my queen here. Now it's your guys to, sh to play. T sh tell me what you think is White's best move. Young man, yes. Um, yes. This is an absolute wonderful move. This is a wonderful move. Knight, while my opponent was thinking about that D about his decision, I suddenly saw what you said. That, oh my gosh, he could play knight to d6, and that's a discovered check against my king. My king could ha would have to move maybe to h8 or maybe to h7, and wherever I move my king, I lose my queen. I would be dead. Yes. No. At first of all, I didn't see the bishop, yes. so I just thought he takes queen. Yeah, but the bishop is making a discover check. So knight d6, the move that you said, is excellent. I would be lost. Charlie. That's even better. I was worried about the discover check that would win my queen, but my opponent shocked me with yet another superb move that I didn't see. My opponent, instead of taking my queen, which I would have done, he took a pawn. What's wrong with him? He played knight takes h6, Double check. The bishop attacks the king. This knight attacks the king. And I thought, oh, I was so happy. I was so happy because my opponent didn't take my queen. I, I, well, I moved my king here because I was really happy I wasn't uh, losing my queen. I lost two pawns, but I figure now I'm going to fight back. Young man? Most of the time, a double check is a checkmate. Most of the time, double checks are very, they're very, very strong. They force the opponent's king to move. And sometimes they are checkmate. It's kind of funny to have a double check checkmate. Double check checkmate? Double check checkmate. Double check checkmate. Double. <laughs> OK. But now I'm happy because I'm not a queen down. I've, I've lost two pawns, but I'm fighting back. What move did my opponent make now? What do you think white... By the way, let me just tell you this. A little insight, huh? 
I'm attacking your queen, yay. I'm attacking the knight, yay. So at the moment, at this exact moment, I was really optimistic that I was going to turn the tables. Yes, young man. What should white play? <laughs> Correct. Bravo. The knight moves to f7, which blocks my queen. It doesn't allow me to play queen takes h5, and the queen threatens my king with a discover check. I have only one move. One move and one move only. He, I had to move my king back to g8. Where is the checkmate? Young man, where is the checkmate? Queen to h8. It's true. Very good. Queen to h8, check and mate. Ah, not quite. Queen h7? Oh, yeah. I'll take it. But queen h8 is checkmate thanks to the knight's protection of the queen. Now that just happened right out of the opening. It's like, what's up with that? I get checkmated and... I know. Look at that. It's sort of like, wow. So that's just a pattern that happens very often and the reason why this pattern works, it's crazy, I know, but the reason why this pattern works is that black makes what to your eyes appear to be a very normal move. He puts his knight here. When the knight comes here, it stops this checkmating pattern that we just saw. But when the knight comes here, knight, castles, and this sudden queen h5 move, holy cow, over. h6, knight takes f7, queen e8. Now, how many in the class, because I want to know if you're asleep, how many in the class think the best move for white is to check and to take the queen? <laughs> Nobody's sleeping. <laughs> Very good. And how many think knight take, yeah, that's right. How many think knight takes h6 double check is the best move? Very, very good. Again, I have lost with this pattern many, many times. Okay, I would just like to show you very quickly, if I can, another checkmating pattern that I think is kind of cool. Let me show you what's going on in this particular problem. Okay. At first, at first, let's think about what's going on. First of all, let's try to get the understanding of the position. Black has a very, very threatening checkmate looking ideas. He could play queen here check and maybe queen here check, try to trade queens. White's two rooks are very menacing and his two bishops also very very powerful attacking forces, but it appears as if black has a very good pawn shield. Stop the clock. Thank you, thank you. Um, it really looks like white has uh, a powerful attack. It's white to play, but it's not easy to see how white's going to win with checkmate. Are you? What's your thinking? Exactly. That's a wonderful move. That would be my move as well. Bishop h6. Let's try to understand why this is such a beautiful move. Well, in the first place, this rook on g1 pins the pawn on g7, so black cannot take the bishop. That's an illegal move. That would expose the king to the rook threat. Secondly, this wonderful move recommended by Aryan, you're threatening to play queen takes g7, checkmate. Okay. However, now it's black's turn 
and black gets to make a move. Black would play queen check. The king would have to move. Black could play queen check, forcing the trade of queens. King has to move. And black could take rook. And now you have to think. You could take this pawn with check. That would be very good. But white's not coming out of this with a checkmate. Black was able just in time to defend the threats. So we say that was really, really close, but missed by just a smidge. <laughs> just a smidge. So we need a better move with, than bishop h6. And I like the move bishop h6, but it wasn't very forcing. Young man, what move do you think? Bishop f6, very good. There should be a lot of different ways how to skin the cat. Now this move is even better than Arjun's move because now after check, king, notice that the bishop and the queen defend the square a1 so that that trading idea will just cost black a rook. Aryan. Ah, that's a different. So bishop f6, I can't trade, but maybe I can just play this move. So now there's no longer a threat of playing rook takes g7. Okay. And it's kind of hard to see how white's going to checkmate. Now, a moment ago when the bishop was here, well, g6, uh, queen g7, checkmate, please sign my score sheets, right? That would have been good. Now, unfortunately, the bishop and the queen are not in the right positions to give a checkmate. So we have to go back. It turns out that while both of these moves are good, White has a better move. And Arya, and I heard you, and I know what move you're going to say. Once more. Whoa. Queen takes g7. Check. How many of you considered this move? Pretty good. Normally, I would never consider such a move. I like my queen. I didn't like giving up my queen. But only for a pawn, but white has an idea. Let's see what white's idea is. Black has no choice. He must accept white's sacrifice. Arjun, what's the follow-up? <laughs> Bravo. The bishop goes to f6, and we say, what kind of a check is that? Double check. The king is attacked by the bishop on f6, but also by the rook. So the king cannot move here to h8. That's illegal. The bishop covers that square. The king cannot go backwards. That's illegal. The rook covers that square. The king has to go to h6. Now, while Arjun has already given us the answer, how many of you can see the checkmate in one? Not a check. Now you see it? Yes. What is it? If you like. Even though I can say it. Okay, go ahead. Rook to h1. Bravo. Simplest. Actually, you guys have a lousy teacher, by the way. I said it's checkmate. In fact, it's not checkmate. True, it isn't. It's right, it isn't. Why isn't it checkmate? Young man. The king can just, sorry, 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 sorry. The king can move where? Ayan. It's a, it's, it's a temporary blocking move. It's not checkmate because, in fact, the bishop can sacrifice itself by moving to h3. Then you would just take the bishop, and it would be checkmate. So I was inaccurate when I said. But that move, queen takes, yeah. That checkmate was a pretty cool one, right? Queen takes g7. That was a pretty cool checkmate. Let me set up 
one other very, very, very special checkmate. So this is a really famous checkmating combination. How many of you have ever heard of Al Suli the Magnificent? Al Suli, you guys don't know Al Suli the Magnificent? One of the greatest players of the uh, 11th century was Al Suli the Magnificent. Now, Al Suli was a poet, a mathematician, and a, and a storyteller. He was also the greatest chess player of the Arabian court. And Al Suli, he played for the king. And the king would bet a lot of money on the outcomes of the, of the games. And Al Suli the Magnificent, he gets his name for a reason. What was the reason? He always won. He always won. And Al Suli the Magnificent created chess puzzles. And today we see a lot of the compositions of Al Suli the Magnificent. Now keep in mind, this guy played 900 years ago. Cool. And he showed this kind of a problem position. And notice that black is threatening checkmate, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be virtually impossible for white to defend checkmate, so black has it in his mind that he's winning the game. But, don't, don't but there's always a way. Uh, there's a way. Al Suli the Magnificent showed a way for white to save the game. Aryan. Okay, just a second, just a second. In fact, this, since the threat of checkmate is so great and there's nothing white can do about it, white has to be desperate. So whatever white does, he has to do with check. So the knight comes to e7 with a check to black's king. Black's king has no choice, it goes to the corner. Young man, yes, in the back, yes. Beautiful move. How many of you want to give up your queen for a pawn? I have a different move. Okay, but this move is the best move. Queen takes h7 check. I'm showing you all of these ways to sacrifice your queen. You should be worried. But this was a... <laughs> yeah, I guess I would win when I'm a queen down. I can really like a queen. I love my queen. I couldn't play when I didn't have a queen. Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. Queen takes h7 check. Black has no choice. He must recapture the queen. He recaptures the queen. And now, young man. Rook h1. How is that? Is that a cool mate checkmating pattern? Yeah. Whoa. But this checkmating pattern of queen h7 is really one of my favorites. And what I would do is when I saw these checkmating patterns, I had a little notebook uh, that, you know, it's the, it's the ring book. You, you can kind of pop it open and you add pages. So I would make sections in my notebook and one of my notebooks, the sections I would make, is checkmating patterns. So I learned checkmating patterns like the back rank checkmate, two bishops checkmate, two knights checkmate, rook and knight, and I'd have them all listed out. I also studied combinations, checkmating combinations, and I would like to show you one last one and I think it's one of the most beautiful checkmating combinations in the world. The following checkmating pattern is called Legal's Mate. Okay, Legal's Mate. And it's a real, I think it's beautiful. It's my, it's one of my favorite patterns. And I just want to show you how it goes. And it's, it's black, unfortunately, black has to play badly to lose to Legal's mate. 
This is a silly move. Black should be developing any one of his pieces, so that's a bad move. But it's important for, it's almost like for you to win a game, your opponent has to make a mistake, right? So we're getting close to the setup. And when my teacher showed me this, Legal's mate, it's like, I got a big smile, I ran home, I told my mom, she said, very good, let's <laughs> go, <laughs> you do your homework. She wasn't impressed, but I was. The opponent plays bishop g4, which on apparent sake is a really strong move because it pins the knight to the queen. So if this knight moves, the queen falls. Young man. Um, exactly. And that's the set, the start of Legal's mate. So basically, to lose the game, Black has to make two mistakes. And in this position, my teacher, he showed me this move, knight takes e5. And I thought this was a ridiculous move. I said, I can't take that pawn with my knight. I'm afraid I will lose my queen. And that's exactly what happened. I lost the queen. Now, what should white play? Charlie. Exactly. Bishop takes f7 check. The king cannot move to the square d7 because that square is protected by the knight. The king cannot take the bishop because the bishop is protected by the knight. There's nowhere else for the king to move except up the board to e7. And as Charlie says, all white now needs to do is to be able to check black's king. And the beautiful move is knight to e5 checkmate. Look how pretty that is. These three white pieces attack and control the whole board. Black has virtually his entire army and he's checkmated. Mm -hmm.